Hey guys, Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be looking at dimensional analysis again, trying to get some more practice in solving unit conversion problems. In our first example, I want to convert one mile to centimeters, and once again, the goal isn't just to convert one mile to centimeters, the goal is to convert one mile to, one mile to centimeters using dimensional analysis. It's a, a valuable tool that we'll be using throughout the next several weeks. Okay, first step is to uh, read the problem correctly, check it out, and I have one mile as a very important number here, that's going to be one of my givens, and I'm going to convert to centimeters, okay? So the first thing I want to do is read the problem well, and then list those givens, all right? So I'm given one, and I want to write down mile. So I have a mile here. And on the other side, just a little reminder, I kind of call it a bookend. We're going to bookend the problem and remind us that we're going to be traveling towards centimeters. The conversion factors that we need are going to be down here. Now, these conversion factors are going to fill up the middle of the problem. Now, we're not going to use every single one of them. I gave you a few down here to choose from. I want you to practice choosing the correct conversion factors. Now, one mile is going to be multiplied against or converted into another unit. Now, the unit I need to convert into will have a conversion factor that expresses miles in it. Because we need to leave miles behind and journey towards centimeters over here. Okay. In order to do so, I need to find my conversion factor that has a mile. And I find it down here, 1 mile and 5,280 feet. Now the question is, where does mile go? Does mile go on the top, 1 mile on the top, or does 1 mile go on the bottom? And the answer is, you need to write down 1 mile on the bottom and 5,280 feet on top. And the reason is because we need to cancel out the unit mile. And we can cancel the unit out when we divide by it. Now I'm in the unit feet. Miles is gone. I need another conversion factor to take me from feet closer towards centimeters. All right, well, this conversion factor has been used, so that's out of the question now. What do I have to take me out of feet? Well, if I look down here, I really only have two conversion factors. I have one foot and 12 inches and three feet and one yard. Now, there's no other conversion factors, though, that use yards, so I'm not going to choose that one. I'm going to choose 1 foot and 12 inches. Okay, once again, guys, the, the million-dollar question here is where do I put the 1 foot? On the top of the problem or the bottom? And if you go by the previous example that I had done, whatever unit that is right here needs to appear down here on the problem. So if feet is right here, I need to have feet down here to cancel out. So 1 foot would be on the bottom, 12 inches on the top. The unit feet is canceled out, and now I'm in inches. Now, the problem doesn't stop yet. It doesn't stop because I'm in inches, and I need to convert into centimeters. So I need another conversion factor along the way. Now, whatever I know so far, I think you're seeing this trend here. Mile begins, mile is down below. I'm in feet now. Feet appears down below. I'm in inches now. So whatever I do, I know that I need to have inches on the bottom. All right, well, 12 inches and one foot's gone. And I'm left here now with, uh, let's see, I got 1 inch and 2.54 centimeters. Let's grab that one. Well, the 1 inch is going to go on the bottom, and the 2.54 centimeters is going to go right here. Inches are canceled out, and the problem is pretty much solved now. I just have to do the math. Okay, so the math is going to be, on the top, 1 times 5,280 feet times 12 times 2.54, and that will tell me how many centimeters I have here. So we're just going to fill in this gap here with a nice little arrow saying we are done, and I just have to solve the math. And the answer that we're going to calculate is going to be 160,934 centimeters. Once again, guys, let's review the problem here. How do we get this problem going? The first thing we did is read the problem carefully, and we saw that the givens were one mile, and also convert into centimeters. So I wrote down my givens right here. That's my first step. I write down the givens. The second step was to fill the problem up with conversion factors. And the conversion factors came from the list of conversion factors that are down here. I then made sure, after step two was finished, that my units canceled out. I need to cancel out the units always. And I'm always canceling them out diagonally going downwards. Feet canceled out feet. Inches cancel out inches. One thing I am not canceling out is the numbers. These numbers stay alive. I'm just removing the units. And I want you to finally see that in the third step of canceling out my units, that centimeters was never canceled. I never cancel centimeters because that is where I'm going to. 
And lastly, the fourth step is a little calculation. Across the top was 1. This is the multiplication sign. 1 times 5,280 times 12 times 2.54. And just want you to recall, these lines here in a math problem are division. Now I'm dividing by 1 mile. I'm dividing by 1 foot. And lastly, I'm dividing by 1 inch. Altogether, my problem gave me 160,934, I believe, centimeters. Now, in the next example, what I'd like you to do is give it a shot yourself. Please make an attempt to solve this, okay? I want to convert one year into seconds. Now, I list no conversion factors here, mainly because these conversion factors are kind of common to us. You know, years, seconds, time, minutes, hours, days, etc. Okay? Press pause. Try and solve this problem. I'm coming around, and I'm going to solve it also. First thing I want to do is look at the problem, and I see here I have years and seconds. And I know the problem needs to be answered in so many seconds. And my problem is going to start off in a given of one year. All right, so that's my first step. From there, I'm going to load up the problem with conversion factors. Well, if I'm starting off in year, I do know something now that I need to see the unit year down below. Now, you have to choose what we're going to do with year. I'm going from a large unit such as years down to seconds. So I'm going to choose one year and 365 days. Awesome. The unit year has now been canceled out. Unit years is gone. I'm in days. Days does not match the ending seconds over there. So I can't have to actually improve this, and I need to cancel out days. I'm going to cancel out days by putting days at the bottom. And I'm going to say in one day, there's 24 hours. Days have been canceled away from the problem now. Now I'm in hours. i got to continue to break this down until I reach seconds. Okay, in one hour, I have 60 minutes. Hours have been canceled. Now I'm in minutes. I need to break myself down a little bit further to get to seconds. So in one minute, there is 60 seconds. And I finally canceled minutes out. Lastly, I don't go any further because these numbers, or rather these units, match. And as long as they match, I stop. My last step here is going to be to calculate the problem. So let's calculate the problem. The problem is going to be 1 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. Okay, guys, quick little computation gives me, I got, man, I got a lot of seconds here. I got over 31 million seconds in this problem. You know, there's more than one way to solve this problem. You're not locked into these conversion factors here. Maybe you wanted to choose um, days and weeks, months, etc. Months is probably not a good one to use because the, the month actually varies in days. But maybe you want to do seven days in a week. Um, there's also different conversion factors of how many seconds there are even in one hour. You could have gone that route. So my point is there's more than one way to get through this problem. But the key is the middle is loaded up with conversion factors to help you convert the given from one year all the way over here to seconds. Along the way, pay attention to your units. Make sure you're canceling out from the top to the bottom. In reality, often I see students doing this. It's a good habit. One year over one. Just to remind them that this one year is actually something over top of one. All right, guys, that's the video for tonight. I hope it was helpful. Have a good night.